So 2020, Rocky Mountain Instinct. Alloy 50 BC. Bit of a mouthful, but it's their lower spec alloy bike, or lower spec. I'm not sure if there's a lower than this spec. But six grand retail here, 5999. Comes with GX Eagle rear derailleur, GX Eagle shifter, NX cassette. This might even be an NX shifter. Oh no, it is a GX shifter, yep, sorry. Descendant 175 cranks. I prefer the shorter cranks, but whatever. This is a large. It's 454 reach with a 35 mil stem. Could definitely go bigger. Could definitely go a little bit bigger. That's an old, like a more of an old school uh, large size. So we got the Fox 36 performance up the front. So pretty basic fork, but very nice, very supple, very smooth. I never took the spring out to look at uh, how it's been uh, put together. It felt good. It, it, it didn't show me any... It didn't feel like it needed a service, basically. Some forks I get and I go, pop. Definitely terrible. And you can tell by how much air they take and whatever. A uh, whole, whole other video on that. It's just got the... It's got slight increments at the on this uh, grip. So it's basically a three position lock on the uh, compression adjustment and it's got low speed rebound. But there's there's faint clicks in between the three positions to fine tune that feeling. And I found about five or six clicks gave me a really nice, nice feeling. So I got 100 PSI in the front. I started at 90, went to 95, ended up putting a little bit of grease in, uh, in the top in the positive just to add uh, almost a token. It's a little bit less than a token, probably half a token or so. I don't have a token on hand, so that's why I did the grease. No big deal. Rear shot, just a DPX2 performance, so it doesn't have the independent low speed compression. I had to play with it back and forth with the, take the spacer out, put the point, point four spacer back in, come standard with a point four spacer. That's probably the sweet spot for this bike. You could go a 0.6 as well, but I think taking the spacer out, uh, it made the bike super supple and fun, but it just goes in and out of its travel a little bit much. So if you want a bike that goes real fast, you'd, you'd want the spacer in there, at least a 0.4. So 0.4 felt good, 0.6 would probably be even better, uh, but it'd come at a cost. So that's cool. Full alloy frame. It's got the race face 150 mil dropper with a WTB vault saddle. The vault saddle is comfortable as long as you tip it in enough. If you tip it up or, or you know, have it anywhere further than, than flat, they don't feel very comfortable like any saddle. That you, you get too much pressure here and not enough here. So always gotta tip your saddles down. So this is your seat. This shouldn't be any, there shouldn't be any support coming from here. Your seat is here. So anyway, the race face, I'm pretty sure it's just a rebranded re Fox transfer. It looks like a Fox transfer. It feels like a Fox transfer. It's really like really soft to push up and down. Uh, and it actually says in the specs that it's made by Fox. So race face lever here is cool. It's got a grippy, kind of grippy feel to it. And it's not it's not heavy, it's really light on the finger, so that's cool. It came spec with a Minion DHF XOTR, which is slippery. It's a slippery front tire. I don't like slippery tires. I don't mind them at the back, that's cool. But at the front, you need grip. If you're gonna demo a bike or ride a bike or buy a bike, whatever, you have to put a grippy front tire on or else it's just a matter of time before you crash, you know, you have a front wheel washout and you crash. It's, you want soft rubber at the front. So with all these demos now, if they don't come with a soft rubber front, I'm putting one on. So I'll put my tire on there and test it with my tire, so that's cool. What else we got here to talk about? So the brakes, we got Guide RE, which I think, I haven't checked it, but I think it's the code caliper, or basically a code caliper. I think they use the code brake pad with the guide levers. So they felt good. The front one was terrible at first, but all that was was a matter of contamination. So there was a bit of shine on the bike, had like a shine uh, stuff on it, and they must have, over sprayed it on the disc and 
Yeah, that was zero front brake, and you can see it in my first video. It was just, it was pretty hairy actually. So 200 mil rotors, front and back. Once I got the, uh, I got a heap of brake cleaner onto it. So once I got the contamination gone, they'll killer. Brakes are excellent. Pull you up on a dime. Uh, climbing. So once I got it dialed and got everything set up and got it in the right, uh, that deeper sag. So 30, close to 35 percent. Around about 20, between 20 and 21 mil of sag. It's a 60 mil stroke or 61. It measures a 61 mil stroke. It says it's a two and a half inch stroke, which works out to be about 63 mil. But take the air out and compress the shock. It gives you 61 mil of travel. So anyway, doesn't matter. Round it about 35 or just under 35 percent of sag. And with the 0.4 spacer, it climbs quite well. 74.4 degrees seat angle isn't ideal. It's not, it's not the modern steep seat angles that we're seeing from most uh, producers now on the, on the latest bike. That steeper seat angle just gives you a real easy climb, regardless of how steep it is, whatever. You can sit in the saddle, keep your weight down, and climb. With this slacker seat angle, especially when it had the seat more central in its, in its rails, when you get into a steep pitch where you're having to work and you want to keep your weight back to keep the keep the grip on the back tire the front end's doing this every pedal stroke like so well not not drastically but it's starting to do it and it's and it's it's getting light at the front it's like you're towing a really heavy trailer and a really light car and your front end's kind of poking up so i moved the saddle forward and it pretty much solved that it, it's still a little bit light on the front but it made the climb easier i also put the dropper down a touch so my legs weren't stretching out so far which which I guess putting it down a touch has brought me forward a little bit made the climbing position better uh, and it was perfect it was good good to climb there wasn't any real uh, labor I wasn't really laboring too hard never used the climb switch most of these bikes when I test them or well, pretty much all of them I like to climb them completely open so I'll set the suspension up to how I know it descends best and climb like that and give you an idea of how it climbs in that position because every bike doesn't matter how the suspension is when that's locked out it's going to climb well okay in relation to what the geometry is and 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 your tire pressures and whatever but it's going to climb well so climbing wasn't an issue i wouldn't go any slacker i would not go any slacker than a 74.4 degree seat angle that's right on the limit there uh, 75 onwards is great 75 onwards is great when you get in the 76s Oh, it's just an absolute breeze to climb on everything and anything. It just feels like those cranks are right underneath you the whole time. You're not pushing out for a pedal. You're not leaning in and pushing out. You're, you're pushing down. So, yeah, that's a little little qualm there, but not a big issue. Turn it back down the hill. Once I got it dialed, so much fun. It's whippy. It's snappy. It's, it changes directions really easy. It's got a little bit of a flexy back end, which... I think helps to be calm when you're carving when you when you drop into a, a rutted corner or something and it's getting it's, you know wait 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 you, it's taken a beating through a corner I think the flex in the back end same similar to the canyon torque that I rode I think that flex in the back end adds a little bit of compliance so you can just kind of hold your line and and keep on it uh, and speaking of holding a line it holds the line well it's not as stable as the Banshee I've just ridden but I don't think it's made as stable. That was a longer bike. It was a 470 reach. Uh, head angle was basically the same, 66. And I had that one as a mullet. So, yeah, a little bit, little bit different. But uh, it's, not as, it's not as stable as these big enduro bikes, which I don't think that's what they're going for anyway. I think they want a playful bike. And to have a super stable bike, you suffer playfulness. This, it's so easy to bunny hop and boost around and... It reminds me of my old, old rain. So my 2013 rain, one of my favourite bikes I've ever had. That thing was light, playful, could still smash pretty much any descent here in Adelaide, or did smash every descent here in Adelaide. I rode it everywhere. I, I demolished that bike. I literally wrapped it around a tree uh, and uh, busted the frame just here. But this kind of brings me back to that bike. It's, it's playful, it's poppy, it's... It seems a little bit easier to bunny hop and throw around than a lot of bikes I've ridden. Uh, 454 reach is pretty much right on where I'm at. I like a 
a 460 reach. My current bike, my transition's a 450, which after riding all of these longer bikes, I'm thinking now that I need a longer bike. A longer bike feels more stable and less likely to, it's, it's just less bucky, I think. Less, less, uh, everything's spread out a bit more. So 454, it's pretty much right on my size. We've got a 780 bar, which never bothered me. It's a little wider than I'm used to. Never really bothered me. Suspension itself is so supple. The back end, when you get it right, when you get the setup right, the back end is so supple and smooth. It eats up the chatter really, really well. And I think that alone, being being so supple, helps helps for it to be more nimble. It's more it's more easy to point in a different direction and change directions and hop from here to there and oh shit, you know, last minute change. The big wheels make the last minute changes a little hard compared to a 27.5. Uh, so on my patrol, for instance, I can go anywhere on that. I can put it anywhere and change last minute anywhere as long as I've got the rear set, rear suspension set up to be not too choppy, obviously. Uh, but for a 29er, it's playful. It kind of reminds me of Andy's Hightower LT. So I rode Andy Clark's Hightower LT and that was small. That was too small for me. But... It had a real playful feeling and didn't really feel 29ery. So this kind of does that similar thing for me. It gets rid of the 29er feeling. It doesn't really have a 29er feeling. It's got plenty of grip. Uh, it's adequately stable, but not super stable. The short offset with a 60, basically 66 degree head angle, 65.9. I was curious to see if there was going to be any tuck or any wash feeling. Nah. I think, yeah, 66 is probably right on that borderline. Right, on. Anything steeper than that, just throw them in the bin. Don't, don't put a short offset on your bike if it's steeper than 66. 66 is right on that limit. So, um, so that didn't bother me. The short offset didn't bother me. Uh, I, just had, I just had a lot of fun on it. To be honest, I just had a lot of fun on it. Once I got it, the first couple of runs, not so much. I wasn't having too much fun because it was just out of the ballpark. The back end was out of the ballpark. Once I got it, especially today, so much fun. A few runs at Moriata and you know, a couple of different changes of suspension, but the last two runs I did there were 100 PSI, six clicks on the low speed compression of the front, 200 in the rear with the 0.4 spacer, rebound to taste, wasn't fast, but it wasn't slow, so it's not super fast, but it's still quite active. It's just fun, so easy to ride, uh, if it was, I wish it was like this when I first got on. I wish I had it set up better, but I know next time. I know for the next bike I demo. You got to pay attention to their recommendations, obviously, uh, but be creative too. It was killer. In and out of all the trails, the rough stuff. So there's a spot where you hop over a fire road uh, into like a real rough, and it's getting real rough and braking bumps. And you can see in the GoPro video, it just, I literally stayed the line on the right and cut into the into the next the smoother bit and it just sat on top of all the bumps it was killer it was really really good so i'm impressed with the forks i'm impressed with the rear end and this dpx2 shock i've hated on it I've, i haven't liked it on my bike on my patrol i haven't liked it on a couple of different bikes i've tried but it felt good it really did feel good so i'd like the independent low speed compression that'll help me to play around with the the configuration of the actual air spring a little bit more so I could go uh, maybe a 0.2 spacer and ramp up the compression a bit and I'd have the best of both worlds I'd have a super linear curve that still has a lot of progression at the end but it wouldn't be diving in and out of the travel so much so the only real problems I've got oh apart from that little click that you're hearing from the from the hub because it's got low engagement the bike is silent it's so good the cable rattle there's no cable rattle there's no cable noise they must have a like an internal run inside the frame to stop it from bouncing against the alloy the alloy actually especially there it kind of feels quite thick so weighs in at 14.8 without pedals as you see it 14.8 without pedals uh, so maybe 15.2 depending on your pedals uh, it shreds. It's cool. I like it. It's like I said. It's not a heavy enduro descender, but it's more of an Adelaide bike. It's an 
I'd say it's an Adelaide bike. It's an all-rounder. You can go everywhere on it. The only thing I would like is a, obviously a steeper seat tube, an seat tube angle, but I could harp on forever about that. That's just being picky. Uh, I wouldn't change the shock. I wouldn't change the fork. I don't even know if I'd change the wheels. They, I'd break them eventually. I think I'd break that back one eventually. Uh, I don't think the race face wheels have got that bigger reputation for being strong, but uh, they're still straight and true. The tires, Aggressor XOTR, didn't cut it, that's cool. Uh, comes with a DHF XOTR, I've obviously put mine, my uh, 3C on there, it was great. Corners well, handles well, pedals reasonably well. Uh, no pedal bob when I'm climbing, it just sits into that sag where, where I've set it and it just, just trundles along. So not a lot of bob, just could do with that, that better seat angle, so yeah. I don't think I mind having such a short stem either. I thought that was going to be an issue. I thought maybe you know, 40 mil stem was as short as you'd want to go before it starts affecting things. And I don't even know how that... I'd have to do a back-to-back -back on a bike where I go 35, 40, 50, and back, you know, back and forth to really find out how all that stuff uh, interacts with everything else. But uh, I think it was okay. I think it was good. I never, Like I said, I never had any tuck feelings from the front. Never had any twitchy feelings from the front. And the only time it did feel washy is when I had the pressure a little bit too low, which is a big tip for you guys. If your fork feels like it, if your front end feels like it washes all the time, you've almost certainly not got enough pressure in it. Almost certainly. You want a firm spring with a reasonably light compression tune to start with, and then you dial in that compression for control. You don't want to be at three quarters or, or, or you know, 10 of 11 clicks of compression to find the amount of support that you're looking for. You need to chase it with configuration and air, and air pressure. So, uh, yeah, overall, I liked it, it was killer. Uh, the sizing is a little bit small. They definitely need to improve their sizing. The largest bike they've got, so this goes from a 454 reach to the XL, which is 481, I believe. So around the 480 mark, and then there's nothing above that. So if you're a real big dude, probably not gonna, uh, probably not gonna suit you. It's probably gonna be too small for you. But anyone average height, you know, standard height, I'm 174, and this is pretty much on the sweet spot. So, yeah, killer bike, needs shorter cranks, silent, little flexy in the back, but no signs of any, there wasn't any creaking, there wasn't any noise. Uh, it spec'd well, it spec'd really, really well. So, business, excellent brakes, excellent suspension, and excellent running gear. The only thing, again, that rear hub, a little bit iffy on that rear hub. It's a little clicky when I, yeah. Every now and then it goes click like it, like the pulls aren't engaging properly. So outside of that, mint. So shout out Whippets for letting me demo this thing. This is uh, four days. I think I've had this for. It's been rad. Well, it'll be four days tomorrow. So I've had it for three days. Um, so I got it for four days. And uh, yeah, what can I say? Thanks a lot.